Hey guys, what's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome back to T with Tisa Trap House Club. Where are we going today? So much to talk about. Blaze, Candy's Restaurant, season 14 of Real Housewives of um, Atlanta. I'm so excited, I can't even get it out. And also, what's going on with Kim Kardashian, Kanye West, Drake, and all this mess? Listen, we got a lot to get into, but before we do, if you're new to my channel, my name is Tisa, I do tarot, I do astrology, I do in-depth readings profiles, but mostly I'm a purveyor of pop. I love doing analysis of reality TP people. I know we don't know them, but from what we see, they are the archetypes of 16 personalities that run our society, right? That's what they are. And it's interesting just looking into people's um, insights. So come on with me and play armchair psychologist while we diagnose people um, about what is ailing them. Anyway, like, comment, and subscribe, whether you're new to my channel or not, it does help me out. It pitches the algorithm, but hey, whether you like, comment, or subscribe, I'm happy to have you here. So let's get into the mess. See, if you actually liked and subscribed, I would have the money to pay to learn how to do editing software. Now, I know what you're saying. Tisa, stop being lazy. How hard could it be to learn a fade out? It is what it is, okay? So, without further ado, let's get into the mess. Okay, I'm back. So, anyway, as you guys might know, Candy, Candy Guy, Candy, and Candy's voice, right? Uh, and Marlo's voice, Candy, uh, as you guys all know, her restaurant blaze was shut down, right? Now, Candy voluntarily closed. Follow me on this. It's actually important. It was shut down for nine health code violations. She got nine points deducted after the inspector observed a food handler switching from raw seafood to ready-to-eat foods without washing their hands. Nine points deducted because the prep coolers were above 41 degrees. Four points deducted for a Chick-fil-A cup in an area with regular food supplies. Four points deducted for lack of procedures and supplies for employees to handle vomit and diarrhea events. Four points deducted for pink organic residue in both ice makers. Four points deducted for lack of consumer advisory on the menu for potentially raw and undercooked meat. And three points deducted for minor storage problems. Three points deducted for staff wearing inappropriate jewelry. Now y'all, y'all know all through undergrad and grad school, I waited tables, right? And I was a bartender. So I'm gonna tell you, that most of this list was the inspector being petty. It doesn't mean Candy's place is dirty, this and that. Now, I will say there are some serious violations. For one, um, switching the handling of food without changing your hands. That can actually, when she uh, switched from raw seafood to ready to eat foods without cleaning uh, hands, that's actually a pretty big violation. That is how E. coli, salmonella, all these things. It really does speak to Candy's uh, staff training. Nine points deducted because the prep coolers were above 41 degrees. That is also a big issue because food needs to be maintained or it's going to go rotten very quickly. And oftentimes the rottenness that gives you a little bit of food poisoning but doesn't send you to the hospital happens when the food wasn't kept cold enough, right? The Chick-fil-A cup, that's just some being petty. Clearly somebody had their cup they were drinking. Listen, I was at a restaurant. I know we weren't supposed to, but I always had a beverage around while I'm in the kitchen doing prep, right? Um... The lack of procedure, uh, so procedures and supplies for employees to handle vomiting and diarrhea events. Again, that's candy being new to the restaurant industry. Basically saying you need to have some Lysol, you need to have some hazmat, whatever. And also the pink organic residue in both ice makers. That says that at the end, so here's the thing. Really good from restaurants at the end of the night, you have to melt the ice down. It is such a pain in the butt. You have to take buckets of hot water. And first you have to take all the ice and take it out. Then what you can't reach because the ice makers are really like deep. You have to dump buckets of hot water in to melt it out. And then the next day when you come in, you always come in an hour or two before the restaurant early opens to set up, but also to turn the ice maker on. So that is gross. It's them being lazy. And also there's some big things that can live in an ice maker. The rest of the stuff is bullshit. Now the restaurant did close for, I think I got a score of, what was the score? It got a score of 500. No, I'm sorry. It got a score of 55. So it temporarily shut down. However, it received a health score of 88 December 4th, 2020. So they know how to keep it clean. It sounds like it was a surprise pop-up visit. Y'all, I wonder if Simon and so Portia are leaning on candy or some, but you know what it probably was? Cause when you run a restaurant, it's an easy way for your haters to get you. 
either somebody was disgruntled for their meal or somebody called the restaurant, uh, the, the inspector on them. And that's why they went and they checked. So they had a pop-up inspection and they were doing all things wrong. That's not an excuse because your coolant shouldn't be too warm. That ice should be melted down, if not every day, at least every other day or every three days and yada, 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 so on and so forth. Now, good news for Candy. It actually reopened the very next day day yes it was shut down on the 19th due to these health violations again because the health inspector let them change them and then come back so it was shut down the 19th they got up the code on the 20th and then the 21st the health inspector came back through and it reopened the restaurant so blaze is back open that's what lets you know somebody called somebody was hating somebody called and that's actually what happened because if it was actually a serious violation or if this was their I think in New York, they give you three. I think in California, they give you three chances. But if you miss those chances, you're just shut down. You have to apply all over again. So that's that, right? So good for Candy. Her restaurant's back open. Hey, what can I say? Running a restaurant is hard work. People don't realize it. That's why I give it to Candy that she is running a restaurant because it is hard work. The profit margin is small. Most of the time you make money off the drink menu and the food margin is very, very small. And it's hard, it's hard, it's hard. Candy's seeing how hard because it's a million little things. I think she's starting to see that she needs more than Don Juan and everybody else running it. Also, I know Candy was worried because the whole premise for her spin-offs is with the old lady gang. Y'all, I think Portia and Simon called this on Candy, right? But the whole premise of the spin-off was old lady gang where they were gonna go to Candy's restaurants and it was gonna be kind of like Vanderpump Rules, but Southern Atlanta style. So you know, you know Candy had to get that shit up and running. She probably called the cleanup woman. She had Mama Joyce scrubbing out the ice maker. It was all, all hands on deck, right? It was all hands on deck. Again, cause for concern, but they cleaned it up quick. And I'm sure they're gonna do a few follow-up inspections. But I hope Candy, because you can't mess with that old lady game check. That Bravo thing, the whole purpose is a restaurant. What are people going to care if... They don't. Now, Old Lady Gang has never had any problems like this, which again leads me to believe that this is somebody hating that actually did this. Now, next up, right? Y'all, when one rises, the other one falls. I keep saying it was Portia that did it. Maybe it was Nini. Why? Because Lanethia's lounge has opened. It is all over the internet. And no lie, it looks like it's doing pretty well. There were lines of people waiting outside. The food was flowing. There was a DJ. The hookah was flowing. Y'all, Nini actually might have done this, right? Nini actually might have done good. Now, the thing is, it kind of sucks. I know her Bravo uh, contract prohibits her from doing, has like a non-compete agreement for a certain amount of years. If you guys don't remember, Nini was the first person that had an idea to have like a black or as Southern Vanderpump rules. I know y'all think that Candy was working on it for two years, but remember when Nene got into an argument with Lisa Vanderpump because she saw a restaurant that would be perfect for her to open up on Sunset Boulevard because she wanted her show. This was years ago, right? Even before Candy even thought of this, right? This is Nene, years ago. Nene actually wanted it, but guess what? Guess what? Lisa Vanderpump went behind her back being a snake and bought the property. That's why you can only share your ideas with people you know that are really writing out for you. Because when it's just casual acquaintances or people you're cool for, and I think actually what Nene did was she actually asked Lisa Vanderpump, hey, what do you think about this property? Could you take a look and see what you like? Lisa Vanderpump went to her and was like, yeah, I looked. I don't think it's going to be good, right? And then she went back and bought it. And that's what became Tom Tom. That's the story of how Tom Tom came to be. Lisa Vanderpump stabbing Nene in the damn back. So right now she can't do the Lindsay Lounge, but I'm really interested to see if she's gonna find a way. I mean, listen, there's no shame in the Zeus Network, but find a way to maybe even have a YouTube reality show where she's doing the Lindsay Lounge. I hope she didn't sell the rights to Bravo because you know how Bravo or most corporations can take an idea that you have take it, sit it on ice, and then do what they want. I hope she didn't give up those rights. But it looks like the Lindsay Lounge is popping off. If I can, I'll put some footage and video in. But y'all know, like, subscribe, or comment because until you until like my subscribers are up, y'all just gonna have to take these trap house talks where it's just the wall and whatnot. 
as you can tell, I'm back in Madrid, right? Where it's just the wall and whatnot. And hopefully one day I'll be able to actually throw in stuff and edit in footage. All right, but listen, let's move on. But it's funny that, that Nini's Lounge is on and popping and Blake's Steakhouse has been struggling for a minute. I know with the old lady gang, Candy was doing well and she did this. The Steakhouse, again, it takes a little bit more to do because like, honestly, Steakhouses, people are very particular about their steakhouses. And when it comes to steakhouse, you can really tell the mastery of the chef. Do you know what I'm saying? I feel like soul food, maybe because I cook it, that's not true. Because soul food is easy to get wrong too. Because you've ever had some bad macaroni and cheese, it'll scar you. It will scar you. You'll literally find yourself after the meal being like, how could you mess up the macaroni and cheese? How could you mess up the macaroni and cheese? No, seriously, how could you mess up the macaroni and cheese? It's cheese, it's milk. But anyway, let's move on to some real dirt about Kim and Kanye and what's going on. All right, so if you guys didn't hear, I'm gonna be the first one that gets to tell you. Yo, Kanye West is supposed to be actually dating my model, Irina Shanka, right? Irina Shack. Anyway, she's Bradley Cooper's ex. She's a super gorgeous uh, model. I think she's Russian, I believe, right? Um, but he's been linked to that supermarket, the supermarket, the supermodel. Kanye is 43. Irinka, Irinka, is that her name? Irinka? Irina. What can Irina? I'm always trying to put a K in somebody's name. Irina is only 35. She has one baby with Bradley Cooper. Now, if you remember, Bradley Cooper and her left after Bradley was doing A Star Is Born. Do y'all remember that show? Bradley did the movie A Star Is Born with Lady Gaga. Everybody was talking about their chemistry. Irina sat in the audience, act like it was no big deal. And then promptly, as soon as she could, walk to the divorce lawyer and left him. Listen, she's a young, gorgeous supermodel. I'm sure some billionaire will be there to cry her tears, but it looks like the billionaire that found her is our boy, Kanye West. Now they've been secret, they've been secretly dating, right? Allegedly, allegedly, right? Um, again, some people are like, they don't know if dating is the right word, but they've definitely been hooking up, right? Um, she, don't forget that she was the girl, if you guys don't forget, she was the girl that, had, let me see if I can show you guys a picture. She was the girl that appeared in Kanye West's music video, Power. And you know how Kanye loves, 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 loves. This is him, her. You know how Kanye, wipe my damn screen off. Sorry, y'all. Got me out here with my screen looking a mess. So look, you know that Kanye, can y'all see her? You know that Kanye loves dating people in his music video. Don't forget he met Amber Rose when she was there, I think, in his Robocop music video. So he's not above, and that's actually where he likes to actually date people. Anyway, here's Irina, right? Irene, Irina, shock, shake, I don't know how to pronounce. Anyway, she's a gorgeous girl, of course, because you know Kanye is not being with anybody ugly from his first fiance, Alexis, to Amber Rose, to Kim Kardashian, to Irina. He stays with a trophy piece. He stays with a trophy piece. This is another video. Well, I'm going to show y'all a picture of her. Don't judge this. She's supposed to be looking like androgynous, but you know, she's like supermodel, right? Pretty eyes, big eyes, you know, supermodel frame. Um, yeah, that's it. So, um, the thing is, right, uh, Last one, the reason why people first started guessing this is because like a month ago, Kanye made those DMX tribute shirts to Balenciaga that did go to DMX's family. So that was a good thing, right? And um, she wore that shirt while she was on a walk with her uh, daughter, Leah. The thing is, everybody was like, huh? Irina's a fan of DMX? When did this come? So people started watching her more. Paparazzi started watching her more before they actually saw her creeping, allegedly, with Kanye West, right? So there we have it. Kanye suffering from bipolar disorder. He is going through it. And this segues into Kim Kardashian. Remember when Kanye was saying that Drake and Kim were messing around? Remember when Drake touched down and Kanye was like, yo, as a man, why would you even do that? I think Kanye left and Drake did a whole Instagram live about how he just touched down in LA and all the stuff and he was in Kim Kardashian's uh, thing. I thought it was just Drake being a troll, right? I really think that it was Drake um, being a troll, but apparently, listen, that's one thing I'll say about Gemini's. They might be crazy. They might be on some other bullshit. You can say what you want, but Gemini's when they talk shit 
are when they talk shit about what somebody else is doing or somebody's true intentions, they are rarely wrong. You just have to like, what is it? What did Kwame Brown say? You just have to chew the meat and spit out the fat, right? But they're rarely ever wrong. And what did Kanye say? Well, apparently Wendy Williams, and you know Wendy Williams, she's come a long day from a hot 97 uh, days. Wendy Williams is not known for actually saying like, she's not known for like reporting bullshit right now. She's just not known for that. She has it on good authority, allegedly, that at Kylie, sorry, Kendall Jenner's, um, hold on, at Kendall Jenner's tequila party, you know Kendall Jenner launched a tequila brand, right? That family stays trying to get money. Kendall Jenner's tequila brand um, launch party, of course, Kim was there to support. So was Drake. A lot of people at the party said that they were all over each other. This was on the 26th. They said that they were all over each other. It was Jenner's 1818 tequila launch party, right? Now, it's confirmed that Kim was there because for this that show her arriving, right? Um, but here's the thing. Drake is Mr. Still Your Girl. I don't under it's a Kwame Brown. I was watching this live. Why would anybody ever let Drake next to the girl? Because Drake doesn't do like oh she Drake is the male version of Portia. Drake is a male version of Portia. So um Drake was all over Kim. They've been had rumors of them hooking up for a while. Even that Drake song, Kiki, Do You Love Me? Are You Riding? And Say You Never Ever Leave Me? That actually was supposed to be about Kim Kardashian. Um, oddly enough, the news of Kanye moving on with that model broke and all of a sudden people are reporting that Drake was all over Kim. I don't know. It seems like it's a bit suspicious. Now I will say, do y'all think it's going to last? Of course not because Drake is the male version of Portia, except for Portia's trying to get with the richest person and Drake is trying to say, say that he ran through every pretty girl in Hollywood, in the strip club, on heaven, hell, and this earth. He ran through all those people, right? So no, Drake is nowhere close to settling down. Kim Kardashian does not really need his fame or money. But then again, Drake got, remember when Drake was messing with Jennifer Lopez? Google it if you don't believe me. Drake got pictures of Jennifer, Jennifer Lopez, had him taking Jennifer Lopez seriously. And no, yeah, and then faded out. And that's when Jennifer Lopez rebounded with A-Rod, all right? For those of you guys who don't know, allegedly, but Google it, you'll see the alleged evidence, right? Um, Kim is divorced. She has a bunch of kids under her belt. She's doing all this stuff. So to tell you the truth, I don't, I don't know. I don't see it lasting, but I could see Drake doing it just to get under Kanye's skin and to push it in his face, right? Um, it is Kanye West's enemy. Again, Kanye West is the male version of Portia. I don't put it past Kim to date Kanye West, but you know that they said Kim was dating Van Jones because she wants to be taken seriously as a lawyer, which side note, she failed her mini bar exam. So for those of you guys who don't know, there's two ways to be a lawyer in California. One, you can go to law school, right? Three years, fine. Two, and by the way, California's bar exam is supposed to be the most difficult one in the country. Um, two, you can intern at a law firm where you learn stuff, right? And when you learn stuff, if you can sit for the test and pass the same bar exam, then you can get a bar license. Kim, I think, got a 474, and I believe you need like a 520 or a 530 to pass. Listen, the bar exam is no joke. I'm not judging her. I And most people don't fail it, don't pass it the first time. I am saying it's kind of weird. I mean, I know she's busy with all her businesses, but you were interning at a law firm. I mean, I would have thought she would have took three months off to study, but then again, she is going through a divorce. And even though she has all this help and all everything, that can't be easy being a single full-time mom. I'm not giving her excuses. I'm just saying lots of people pass the bar, fail the bar exam, just as many fail as pass. So actually I think even more people might fail than pass. So you know what? It is what it is, right? So she didn't pass. Um, what else is going on? Also, I know we keep talking about Kim Kardashian. She is in the news so much. I think that she's literally talking about passing um, her, hold on a second, let's see, let's see. Okay, sorry, I'm back. Um, I let these birds build a nest outside my window 
and I've been gone. I just got back to Spain and these birds have lost their damn mind. Like this is now the spot. This is a hang up spot. Listen, as soon as a little baby bird gets big enough and flies away, it's over. I'm never building a nest. Well, I didn't build a nest. I let them. But anyway, let's get back to the gossip, right? Um, Kim and Kardashian is being sued by her gardeners and maintenance staff, right? Now this, this is a little crazy. She's being sued by her bar gardeners and um, uh, maintenance staff. And it's saying, so this is a $60 million house. There's eight people. Um, they're gardeners or whatever. And they said that 10% of their paychecks were missing. They never paid it to the tax authorities. That's actually a big, big thing uh, in California. Because what happens is not only do you have to pay that money back, but the state give, like triples the money and gives you heavy fines. And the people can sue you on top of that. So there's that, right? And um, they were told it was taken off for taxes, but it never was. Um, but as a farmer employee's alleged lawsuit, the 10% was never used for taxes. The employees claimed that they never received pay stubs or itemized wages. That's another big thing. Y'all, if you are running your business, make sure you do this. And that nobody kept track of their hours work. The lawsuit asked that nobody was ever paid on time, that Kim refused to pay overtime for hours work, and that they were denied regular breaks while working. One farmer gardener alleges that when he spoke, up and asked Kim personally where his overtime pay and rest breaks were, she fired him on the spot. Yes, when she approached the boss and said, hey, where's our overtime? And she fired him on the spot. Can you imagine? Yo, you know, I sometimes give the Kardashians a pass, but I will notice that nobody accumulates money that much without screwing people over. The fact that someone's doing work for you and they approach you to ask what's going on and you fire them on the spot. Now, a lawyer for Kim uh, said wage theft and other workplace violations are right. I'm sorry, a lawyer for one of the people said what wage theft and workplace violations are a widespread problem in Los Angeles. My firm is currently investigating other potential violations against these defendants, as well as other powerful families and businesses on behalf of everyday workers. Yo, I know that's right. You know what happened? An employee, an employment law person finally got an in and now there's going to be lawsuits going around everyone and you know sadly enough in california culture allegedly it's very common to hire people who have questionable um legal citizen status questionable citizen status you do it because one of the things they do which is really sad and they do it to all immigrant labor they literally hire you they're hoping that you are illegal and only usually are you illegal because you're being paid cash and you're being paid very little. So they're hoping that you're illegal. So when they decide to stiff you or not pay you or pay you late or pay you slow, you have nothing to say because you're afraid they're going to call ICE on you because ICE will come and take you and deport you and then you'll just be screwed, right? Now, right? Um, Kim responded and said she never stiffed her staff. She said these workers were hired and paid through a third party vendor hired by Kim to provide ongoing services. Kim is not a party to the agreement made between the vendor and the workers. Therefore, she's not responsible for how the vendor manages their business and their agreements they've made directly with their staff. Kim has never not paid a vendor for their services and hopes the issue between these workers and the vendor who hired them are amicably resolved. Kim comes from a family of lawyers, but you know where Kim messed up? Do you know where Kim messed up and this actually drives her in and makes her liable? When that one guy spoke up and made her aware that her third party vendor that she, because in a perfect world, it's like, well, I didn't know it was a third party vendor. But once you had plausible knowledge, once you had, there's actual notice, there's implied notice, and there's construction, constructive notice. Constructive notice is where, well, I see gardeners out there every day, so I must have hired him. You don't have absolute confirmation, but it's obvious from looking, right? Implied is if I see your signature or you're signing off. It's implied you know about it because you had to sign off. These are just examples. Actual notice is when somebody comes and tells you this is what's going on. And you cannot deny that you didn't have, have knowledge about whether somebody thought it was going on. Now, whether it was going on is something different, right? But when that gardener walked up and asked Kim, yo, what's up? Like, we haven't been paid. What's going on? Can you tell me where's my money? And Kim fired her on the spot. That's where she messed up. That guy's going to get a payday because that was the guy notifying Kim that on her dime, there was illegal stuff happening. Kim then had a duty of care, right? She had a duty of care to either approach the company or approach the workers to figure out what's going on. It didn't have to be Kim, but it had to be somebody under her thing acting as her agent. Because she neglected those cares, 
Yo, what, this shit's gonna settle. Now granted, all the workers might not be able to get it, but whoever had the balls to speak up and go say something to Kim, even though he got fired on the spot, he's gonna get a payday, mark my words. Anyway, that's a little bit of a mess. As things pop up, I'll be sure to post and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.